here we go. Hello everybody, my name is Studio Man Gaming, and today we're going to be reading some Laughing Jack with my friend Aiden, that's our one again. Oh voice. yeah. <laughs> Pretty nifty. My huh? dark, deep voice is very good for these types of scenarios. I can make my voice go like this, or I can make my voice go like this. <laughs> that might fit the role of Laughing Jack just a little bit, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be doing the voice of Laughing Jack and the dad. I'm going to be doing the voice of James. And we're each going to be reading a paragraph of narration and then switching over. Okay, let's get right into it. It was a nice summer day. My five year old son James was playing outside in the backyard of our suburban home. James has always been a quiet boy, he plays by himself mostly. He never had many friends, but he has always had a wild imagination. I was in the kitchen, feeding our dog Fido. Wow, what a classic name. What an OC name, man. I heard that it sounded like James talking to someone in the backyard. I'm not sure who it was, but he could be talking to. He finally made a friend? Being a single mom, it's hard for me to always keep an eye on my son. So I decided to go outside and check on him. Oh, okay, I'll go. When I went into the backyard, I was a bit confused, because James was the only person back there. Was he talking to himself? I could have sworn I heard another voice. James, it's time to come inside. I called out to him. He came inside and sat down at the kitchen table. It was about lunchtime, so I decided to make him a turkey sandwich. James, who are you talking to out there? I asked. James looked up for a moment. I was playing with my new friend. He said, smiling. I poured him some milk and continued to prize any good mother would. Does your friend have a name? Why didn't you ask him to have lunch with us? I asked James. James stared at me for a moment before replying. His, His name, name is, is Laughing Jack. Oh, wait a second. I was supposed to do the voice of James. I forgot. You killed me. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Murder. Now my voice will now have to go hang itself in the corner. All right. <clears throat> I was a bit taken back by what he had said. Oh, that's a, that's a strange name. What does your friend look like? I asked a bit confused. He's a clown. He's a clown. He has long oh, hair. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's going to take some time getting used to. <laughs> okay, okay. He's a clown. He has long hair. I have a big swirly coat note. He's got long arms and baggy pants with stripy socks, and he always smiles. I realized my son was talking about an imaginary friend. I suppose it's normal for kids his age to have imaginary friends. Especially when he really has no friends. It's probably just a phase. Just the day went by as per usual. It was starting to get it late, so I just put James to bed. I tucked him in, gave him a kiss, made sure to turn out his nightlight before I closed the door. I'm pretty tired myself, so I decided to go to bed not long after. Ugh, I had an awful nightmare. It was dark. I was in some kind of run-down amusement park. I was scared. Running through an endless field of empty tents, broken down rides and abandoned game hunts. The whole place had a horrible look to it. Everything was black and white. The prize stuffed animals all hung from nooses in the game hunts. The huts, ugh, all with sick grins stitched to their faces. It felt like the whole park was looking at me, even though there wasn't another living thing in sight. Then suddenly, I began to hear music play. The sounds of Pop Ghost the Weasel being played on a squeeze box echoed through the park. It was hypnotizing to say the least. I followed its tune to the circus tent almost in a trance, unable to stop my legs from moving forward. It was pitch black. The only light came from a single spotlight shining on the center of the big top. As I walked toward the light, the music slowed down. I found myself singing along, unable to stop. All around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. The monkey thought all was fun, twas all was fun. The music stops, right before its climax. And suddenly, the light shot on. The intensity of the lights was practically blinding. All I could see was a small, dark silhouette shuffling towards me. Then another one appeared. And another one. And another one. There were dozens of them, all coming towards me. 
I couldn't move. My legs were frozen. All I could do was watch as the haunting figures drew nearer. As they got closer, I could see they were children. As I looked at each one, I noticed they were all horribly disfigured and mutilated. Some had cuts all over their body. Others were severely burnt. All, and others, others were missing limbs, even eyes. Children enveloped me, crawling at my flesh, dragging me to the ground and tearing inside me as the children tore me apart and I faded away. All I could hear was laughter. Horrible, awful, evil laughter. I woke up the next morning in a cold sweat. After taking a few deep breaths, I looked over and saw that a few of James's action figures were positioned facing me on top of my nightstand. I sighed. James had probably woken up early and put these here. Gathered up the toys and made my way to James' room. However, when I opened the door, James was sound asleep. Just shrugged, placed the toys back in his box, and headed out to the living room. A little while later, James woke up and I made him breakfast. He was quiet and he seemed a bit groggy. Perhaps he didn't sleep well either. I decided to ask him about the toys. James... Did you put the toys in Mommy's room this morning? His eyes shot up at me for a moment and quickly glanced back down at the cereal. <laughs> Laughing Jack did. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were gone. I heard your dog and I thought you went to go kill it. <laughs> no, I went to go sigh over it. That, that, who do you think did that evil laugh? Yeah, I know, but then I thought, okay. My brain stopped timing things a while ago. Go on. Oh, I, did, I rolled my eyes and responded. Well, you tell Laughing Jack to keep James nodded and finished up his breakfast, then decided to go out and play in the backyard. I went to relax in the living room. I must have dozed off because I woke up a couple hours later. Crap! I need to check on James! I was a bit worried. It had been over two hours and I haven't checked on him. I went and stepped out into the backyard, but James wasn't there anymore. I was getting nervous, so I called out to him. James! James, where are you? Just then, I heard a giggle coming from the front yard. I rushed out through the front gate to find him in front of the house. He was just sitting on the sidewalk. I breathed a sigh of relief and walked over to him. James, how many times have I told you to stay in the backyard? James, what are you needing? James looked at me and then reached into his pocket and pulled out a handful of hard candies and colors. It made me very nervous. James, who gave you that candy? James just stared at me, not speaking. James! Please, tell Bobby we got that candy. James hung his head down and said, Laugh, Jack. My heart sunk. I kneeled down to look at him in the eye. James, I've had enough of this. Day. Wait. <laughs> Laughing Jack's thing is not real. Now, this is a very, situa it's a very serious situation. I needed to know who gave you the candy. I could see my son's eyes tear up. Mama. Laughing Jack did give me the candy. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. James has never lied to me before, but what he's telling me is impossible. I make him spit out the candy and I throw the rest away. James appears to be fine. Maybe I'm just overreacting after all he could have gotten into from Tom and from all, from, uh, After all, he could have gotten from Tom and Linda next door, or Mr. Walker down the street. Either way, I'm going to have to keep a closer eye on James. That night, I put James to bed as usual and decided to go to bed early myself. Suddenly, I was woken by a loud bang coming from the kitchen. I sprung out of bed and hurried downstairs. When I got to the kitchen, I was horrified. Everything on the counter had been thrown to the floor, and our dog Fido hung dead from the light picture. His stomach was cut open and stuffed with candy, the same type that James was eating earlier that day. My shock was quickly broken by a sharp scream coming from David. <laughs> Followed by loud clap, clap, <laughs> crashes, crashes. I quickly grabbed the knife from the drawer and moved up to the stairs with the speed that only a mother whose child is in danger could have. I burst through the door and flicked on the lights. Everything in the room was knocked over and tossed on the floor. My poor son in his bed, crying and shaking with fear, full of urine and stained with sheets. I scooped up my child and ran down the house, ran out the house, and went next door to Tom and Lynn's house. Lucky, luckily, they were still awake. They let me use their phone and I called the police. It didn't take them long to arrive and I explained what happened. They looked at me as if I were crazy. I searched the house but all they found was a dead dog and two trash rooms. 
officer told me that someone had probably gotten into the house and done this right before making a quick escape when they heard me up coming upstairs. I knew it wasn't true. All the doors were locked and none of the windows were open. Whatever was in my house didn't come from outside. The next day, James stayed inside. I didn't want him to leave my sight. I went into the garage and found his old baby monitor. I set it up in his room. If anything comes into his room tonight, I wasn't going to be able to hear it. I was going to be able to hear it. I went to the kitchen and grabbed the largest knife from my drawer and put it on my nightstand. Imaginary friend or not, I'm not letting anything hurt my little boy. Soon enough, night came. I put James to bed. He was afraid, but I promised him I wasn't going to let anything happen to him. I tucked him in, gave him a kiss, and turned off the nightlight before closing the door. I whispered to him, Good night, James. I tried to stay up as long as I could, but after a few hours, I felt myself drifting off. The baby would be safe for that night, and I needed to sleep. Just as I lay my head on the pillow, I heard a soft noise coming from the baby. From the baby and I murder! I had just put on my nightstand. At first, it sounded like interference, like a kind of radio would make. Then it turned into a soft moan. Was James asleep? Then I heard it. The laugh. From my nightmare. That horrible laugh. I sprung from my bed and grabbed the knife from under my pillow. I rushed over to James' room and creaked the door open. I tried the light switch, but it wouldn't come on. I took a step. And I could feel the warm, thick liquid on my feet. Suddenly, James' nightlight came on. I could see the absolute horror laid out in front of me. James's body was nailed up on the wall. The nails piercing through his hands and feet. His chest is cut wide open. He's working on the floor. His eyes, tongue had been removed, along with his teeth. I was disgusted. I could hardly believe this was my baby boy. Then I heard it again. A soft, desperate moan. James was still alive. My baby, my poor baby. In such pain. Barely clinging to life, I ran across the room and vomited on the floor. My sickness was interrupted by a horrible cackle coming from the room behind me. I spun around while still wiping vile from my mouth. Then, out of the shadows emerged his fiend, responsible for all this horror. Laughing Jack. His ghost white skin and matted black hair hung down to his shoulders. He had piercing white eyes surrounded by dark wing dark black wings rings. His twisted smile revealed a row of uh, patchy, uh, sharp, sh sharp, jagged teeth and his skin didn't look like skin at all. It almost looked like rubber plastic. He wore a patchy black and white clown outfit with striped sleeve and socks. His body itself was grotesque, his long arms hanging down past his waist. The way he almost, the way he was poised, they looked like almost bonus, bonus. He looked like a rag doll. Let a sick laugh. <laughs> As you know, he was pleased with my reaction to his work. He then turned around slowly in front of James and began to laugh. It was more of a horrific sight. It laid out. That was enough time to shake me my terror. Get away from him, you poster! <laughs> I rushed at the monster, raising the knife above my head. Stabbed down at him, but as soon as the knife touched him, he disappeared in a cloud of black smoke. The knife had passed right through and pierced his James, still beating heart, splashing the warm blood on my face. Oh, what have I done? My baby. I killed my baby. I immediately fell to my knees and I could hear sirens in the distance blowing louder and louder. My boy. My sweet baby boy. I promised mommy I would protect you, but I failed. I'm sorry, James. I'm so sorry. Police arrived soon to find me in front of my son, still wielding copper blood covered knife in my baby's blood. The trial was short and sandy. I was placed into the Peropolis house of Permanently Insane, where I have been for the past two months. It's not so bad here. The only reason I'm awake now is because someone was playing. Pop was the weasel outside the window. Talked to the Ordersley about it in the morning. And that was Laughing Jack! You know what? That was actually pretty decent. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, that was actually really good. There isn't a there is an origin story for it that we might read tomorrow. 
yeah, definitely the origin story would be something good to read, really how he got there. And the origin story is about where he originated from and how Laughing Jack came to be the way he was, because he always wasn't like that. I've actually Honestly? heard it read by Snuffbomb himself. Um, but yeah, it was actually pretty good. Right, I almost want to make my own one, just because I feel like I could probably do something completely insane, because I am like the sickest human being on Earth. Actually, you know what? I will. I will write something, and I will. And we're going to read that one day. And that would be, you see how you guys like that. You might want me to read it, though, because I'm going to include a lot of cursing. So I might do a video and give it to you, so you can put it up. I did think I can... the word booster, though. Still counts. Well, I mean... You're not allowed to curse too much because you don't really have a headset to hear me and whatever. So I'm going to write something utterly disgusting and gruesome and put it in a text document and I need to put it on I my channel. It's an original book. I can still probably read it. I mean, what I'll do, actually, you know, I'll, I'll write one and I'll read it and then I'll give it like, I'll probably post it. On some site like the creepbus.org or whatever, but I'll definitely uh, do it for you, and then you can just put it on yours, put music in the background and whatnot. I'll do something for you. That's a little little hint, a little teaser, I guess. Then you guys are gonna get lucky. You guys are gonna see a, an original. <laughs> I'm also gonna write one too. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I'm probably just gonna write it in like um, what do we call it? What do we call it? Uh, notepad, and then I'm gonna copy paste it. Put it in. Yeah. Send it to them. So I'm gonna do. But um, anyway, I guess that was Laughing Jack. It was pretty decent, as he said. Um, yeah, little escalates towards the end. She gets filed for being crazy, and she just she should kill herself. Honestly, that's probably the best option she's got. I'm not like I'm like not to say that she should do that, but she has absolutely nothing to live for. So, well, I mean. She could technically, well, no, criminally insane means she's going to be stuck in there for a long time. It's just not going to be as bad. Mm. Criminally I don't insane. even know. Yeah, it, she would be stuck in there for a long time, but hold on a second. Let me just search this up right now. I'm going to look this up on How long do criminally insane people stay in prison? It's different for different charges and I mean, situations. Murder, yeah, that's all she got charged with, murder. Well, then she got insanity, so it wasn't as bad, or as long, but I think she got to be on mental pills for a bit, too. I think they get out, it's, well, no, actually, no, if they're, like, really bad, like, mass murderers who are, like, serial killers and crazy, I think they, they just get locked up in there anyway. Unless they went into, like, a, an asylum... Or whatever, different kind of depends. Pretty sure she just went to an asylum. I don't know if she'll ever actually get out though, but at least it's a decent thing to live in. Well, not really a good place to live in and whatnot, but it's better than being in jail and surrounded in crackheads. So, hmm. She'll probably end she's crazy. She'll probably end up killing herself at some point. Well, I mean, she's not really crazy, but yeah, the fact that she told that story so calmly, she probably went crazy afterwards. That would make sense. I mean, the fact that gave away that she's crazy is just like, you know what? I'm hearing Pop Goes the Weasel outside my window right now. I'll just talk to you about it. I'll just talk to the orderlies about it in the morning. Why not? Like, it just means it just shows you that she just diminished her brain. Well, that's what happens, I guess. It made well. Point is, it made sense. It got really gruesome. It got escalated. And it was a bang-up job. Put it that way. And I just love using my creepy, buttery voice at the end of these things. Just to read things like this. Even though I don't really sound like that all the time. I feel like you didn't get enough reading time. You're probably going to mm. read more in the next one. Yeah. we do the origin story. Oh, I, this is actually really makes me want to write one. I could probably write pretty good. Too. Like, I'm like... I can write essays and stuff like that in a matter of an hour. So to write a creepypasta, like a really detailed, gruesome story, I could probably like, I could try to make it not too cliche, but I'll, I'll make sure there's guts everywhere. 
That means you I'll can make up your thing. own OC character, you know that, right? OC character? Mm-hmm. Original character. Oh. I could, yeah, I'll probably get a decent one. I gotta think about a concept, though. I'll, tr I'll put down some notes. I already thought of one. I'm not gonna tell you guys, because you know why? It's not gonna be spoilers. Ooh, I got a good idea. Okay, so I, I guess we can stop recording now. Be sure to check out Aiden's channel. And uh, subscribe to me, to him, and leave comments, suggest for new crazy bosses and whatsoever else things you could do. Um, I guess I will see you guys in the next video.